Okay, there we go. Um, hey, everybody. Uh, hopefully, you can hear me. Um, the chat is, uh, as I've mentioned, a couple of things in there. And as you can see, it's just me. Um, my, my redhead friends, uh, they, they were not able to join me today. Um, but I figured I want to go ahead and stream anyway. This is the time I get to do these kinds of things. So I went ahead and figured I could just do solo. Um, but yes, today uh, I want to play with something called AWX, um, which is the upstream version of Ansible Tower. Um, I'm thinking about spinning up a couple VMs using Vagrant uh, or a Vagrant VM on my machine, and then um, spin up the AWX getting started, and then try to manipulate the, the VM with that. Um, and then also, uh, I was thinking about playing around with uh, creating a programmatic way uh, using some Unix tools to create access keys and secret keys. Uh, yesterday during the stream with Paul Tchaikovsky, or Tchaikovsky, Tchaikovsky, I'm working on that. Um, we had to make some uh, access keys and private keys. And it turns out there's actually a, a dedicated format for it if you didn't know. And um, I was thinking about writing some scripts uh, maybe some functions and, and bash or whatever. So if I ever needed this again, I can just type it out and it can give me a generic one that I could add to, you know, Minio or whatever I need to pass. Play around with some, you know, uh, randomizations or whatever. So, uh, but first I'm going to start with AW AWX. Um, I'm going to play around with some Vagrant stuff inside of it and then kind of grow from there. Uh, as, as like always, uh, please give any questions or thoughts. Don't hesitate to throw them into the chat. Um, and I will do the best I can to keep an eye on that and kind of hack away at the same time. Uh, hopefully, uh, this will be, I'm going to kind of kind of talk stream of conscious and hopefully we'll get some fun things out of it. No matter what, you'll learn a lot about, you'll learn some stuff about Vagrant if you've never played with it. Um, and also, uh, we'll be able to play with some some neat stuff in there. So let's get going. All right. First thing first, gotta share my screen. Share. So if you've never seen this, uh, this is AWX right here. Um, I'll throw this into the chat if you are curious. Um, so it is, as they say right here, it provides a web based tier. REST API and engine built on top of Ansible. Um, it's the upstream preacher for Tower, a commercial derivative of AWX. Um, I've actually seen this sticker before, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, but it's, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty solid little project. And I've, I've heard of quite a few people using it um, just as a command and control, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, it's kind of a throwback to the old uh, Bastion SSH machine or whatever. Um, to be able to be like, this is um, th this is where if you need to administer anything in our clusters or in our VMs or whatever, you connect to that machine or you use that machine and then jump out to where you need to. Um, AWX gives you, or from what it sounds like, gives you a really nice interface on top of it. So um, if you look here, I swear I saw it a second ago, I or not. I believe there is a way to just pull down a VM and have it just do all the V, uh, spin it up as a vagrant file. I swear I saw one and I'm already behind my curve, which is not great. Um, okay, so let's see, AWX uh, vagrant. AWX vagrants. Um, so this one looks pretty good. For what we're looking for. Um, there we go, install Ansible, and then do vagrant up. Setting up our local host file. Here we go. Okay, cool. So it looks like, oh, this, uh, if you didn't know, 
Uh, Jeff Gerling, Gerling here is a huge proponent of a lot of the Ansible, uh, Ansible Galaxies um, modules. Uh, so I would absolutely trust what he has here. Um, and it looks like it's relatively straightforward. Um, so we basically pull down the Vagrant file, run on Ansible Galaxy. So let's, do I have Ansible installed? Huh? So um, crew updates, go ahead and start there. So while this is going. Good old Zoom taking up space on my screen again. And then, oops. And so I go into this exp directory here. And I'm uh, unlike I normally do with one of friends and all, I'm actually doing this on my actual laptop. So this will be a little bit interesting. See how I do all this stuff here. Uh, where is the, where's the clone? Oh, this is actually inside. Oh, okay. So we'll go ahead and copy this. Um, uh, get clone. This guy, and go to answer, and then AWX. Okay, just as he was saying, then I should have a vagrant file in here. I do. Let's take a quick look at the vagrant file to see what is going on here. CentOS 7, interesting. Uh, virtual box, two CPUs, and oh, so he's already doing, he's already creating something for us. Awesome, um, I think. Yes, no. I think it's two machines. Let's find out. Uh, first brew upgrade. Ansible. I was smart and used brew to install this, hopefully. Let's see. Yep, there we go. Not too far behind. All right. All right, uh, still pouring. There we go. Oh, Ansible's gotten big. Where we're used to it so much smaller. All the dependencies, YAML lint, always a good idea. Oh, I think I did an upgrade. <laughs> so I was upgrading everything. That's not very good. Let's keep it going. All right, see, all right, there we go. Got that up and running. Uh, so now I should be able to come up over here and then do Ansible Galaxy install dash r require mints.yaml. Okay. All right, it's looking good. 
And then we can, should be able to just do vagrant. Oh. Let's see what happens. All right, we're pulling down the vagrant boxes. And it's gonna take a couple minutes, that's not a big deal. Uh, 17 seconds, excuse me. While this is going on, what I will do is come over here, Vim. I see your hosts. And then 192, 168.0. Six dot sixty sixty five and it's AWX dot local. Okay. All right. So we're getting our AWX box up and running in here. Running our provisional for Ansible, running the playbooks, gathering the facts. This is looking good. Let's see here. Things are happening, I think. If anyone has any questions or thoughts, please don't hesitate to put them in the chat um, as we're waiting patiently for machines to spin up, which is always fun. It's like watching paint dry. Though, isn't the joke a, a good system administrator is just watching a progress bar go by anyway? Not have to do anything because it's all automated. Something like that? No? Okay. It's getting there. Hopefully, this isn't taking up too much of my resources. We'll see. Bring up the sound just a little bit. Hopefully y'all can hear me better now. It's always good. It's always good. Patiently waiting. I think we've done all our host stuff. Admin password, good old secure password there. Let's see here. It's kind of sitting here. Uh, activity monitor, see that it's going. And it should probably kill Docker. It's not doing anything. Rip Docker. Here's our VBox headers. That's actually spinning up the box. That's good. Come on, Docker. Don't you go away. Thank you. There we go. So I still got four gigs free. Uh, hopefully, it'll spin up another box. Oh, here we go. Here we go, things are happening. This is a bad habit, but that's fine. Um, Sherling, okay, this seems reasonable. Um, the question was, what is my expected output? Um, right now, I'm, I'm hoping for anything to really to show up, um, just to make sure that the machine the AWX machine actually spins up. I didn't want to, if you look at the actual installation box for AWX, it's um, uh, it's it's pretty intense the last time I looked at it. And I was really hoping to just get it a uh, disposable, I guess is the right word, machine with AWX on it. Um, so I could play around with it so I can actually spend the time playing with it instead of trying to configure it. Um, and, I mean, I have all these other ways of doing it using Kubernetes and OpenShift and 
Docker Compose, as you can see. It's just, I just felt like it, it felt like just a VM talking to another VM, so I didn't have to worry about the Kubernetes part or any of that jazz. Um, though having it run on Kubernetes is a pretty great idea. Um, if so this is just a Helm chart. Um, and then I could actually re re reach it and I could make this more of a production build, but also I don't really have anything else running, right? With this, I just needed something to play with. And I figured just a, a vagrant box would be easiest, uh, but we'll see. If this obviously doesn't work how I want it to, um, there's nothing nothing stopping me from spinning this up on my Kubernetes instances. So, my gut told me to try something easier. I think I know him. I know I've, I know I've crossed path him before. So. Keep going. Gotta love watching paint dry. Always fun. Always fun. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Making things happen so but surely. Slowly but surely. <laughs> Don't, don't really have anything else I can be doing, unfortunately, while this is this building. I wish there was a way I could see into it. Because, you know, and maybe, so I was thinking also about, well, so just on a completely random tangent, um, I have another machine behind. Uh, so the next question is, what, what would it give you more insight in what's happening on the back end, like with Kubernetes? Um, from what I, it looks like the Kubernetes installation is um, just some containers. So it would just pull down the containers and run the containers. I think this is actually building it, which is a little bit different because if you look at, um, I look at it, it is a Python app, I believe. So yeah, it's JavaScript and Python. So there's probably a lot of stuff going on underneath the fact where this is one of those statements of like, should I just be using Docker Compose instead here? So I could just even pull down the containers to do all the work for me. but I've been re rediscovering Vagrant recently due to some other projects I'm working on. And I thought having some two Vagrant VMs would be easy, but obviously this is proving to be, for lack of a better term, slow. <laughs> so man, I'm, not, I'm not completely married here, but we'll, 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 we'll see. I wanna, at least, I wanna see if it, if it keeps going and fails. Um, because there's a chance if it if it does work and it hasn't been touched in a while, it does what we expect it to do, then you know, it's just basically filling dead air time. Um, I do want to mention though, um, what are they saying? What are we gonna say? Um, uh, thanks, Mark Mark Ecke, Mark A C I for following the channel, appreciate that. Uh, you you were officially the, you broke us over 2,000, or 20, 2,500 followers, that's great. Oh no, we actually know, sorry, no, 2,500 over two. But anyway, it's a, it's a big deal for us. We, we, we really do hope people enjoy the, the content we make um, on on our IBM developer Twitch channel. It's, it's true developers, right, trying to do this stuff, uh, which is always nice. Um, there was something I was going to point out, and I've just completely forgotten what it is. Did want to see this one more visibility into here. Mentioned um, about the vagrant boxes, playing with the vagrant boxes, and then got sidetracked by Kubernetes again story of my life is getting side back with Kubernetes. Um, forget what it was now. Oh yes, that's what it was. So um, I have a spare machine behind me that used to be an old gaming machine. Um, 
And unfortunately, I've ran out of monitors. My main monitor for that one died. So I had to steal it for my streaming now. And uh, I'm thinking about installing something called Proxmox on it. Um, so uh, just a little historical context. Um, I used to be a pretty relatively big VMware person uh, in a previous life. Um, I spent a lot of time with VMware. I was a V expert. Um, I, I did some really neat stuff in that ecosystem for, uh, for some open source software. Uh, and then for some reason or another, um, I've kind of moved away from it. And uh, I still have some hooks into the community and all, but um, I spend more time on the Kubernetes and OpenShift sides. Um, so there is a thing out there called OKD right here, which is the community distribution, distribution of uh, Kubernetes uh, that powers OpenShift, as it says right there. Um, so it's like the, it's the Fedora version of OpenShift, just as AWX is the Fedora version of Ansible Tower, and Fedora is the Fedora version of RHEL. Um, it's community distrib distribution. It's the whole like, this is my, um, this is bleeding edge. Uh, you don't really get commercial support if something breaks, it's on your shoulders to fix it. Well, um, I had this weird, almost kind of crazy idea of using Proxmox here um, as my new hypervisor uh, in my, my virtual environment on this machine because I've never played with it, like I said, and then attempt to get OKD installed inside of that with a bunch of like a handful of VMs or whatever, which might seem kind of interesting. Um, but at the same time, I'm really well versed in ESXi, for instance, with VMware. Um, at the, also on top of that too, um, a really dirty secret for me is um, I know of WebVert, right? Which is like the core way open source virtualization that is built inside of inside of um, pretty much every major RHEL or Red Hat distribution now. Um, so in theory, what I could do is I could use CentOS on that box um, and then put WebVert on there and then use WebVert to spend my time using WebVert as my hypervisor, which almost feels like the correct thing to do. Um, I just, I'm really like, I feel it's one of those like first world problems, right? Where you're sitting here and I have all these different versions of hypervisors I can use on this machine. I mean, hell, I even thought about you running uh, Fedora Core OS on there. Fedora Core OS on there. Um, this guy, just so what I could do is I could rip off um, all my, I have a FreeBSD box, which is my ZFS pool. And I have a couple of applications running on top of it. And I was thinking about actually putting CoreOS on this Spermus machine, moving all those applications over and then using NFS to mount my ZFS pool. So then when things come in to use those applications, uh, I do this inside of a containerized CoreOS instance. So I don't even touch the OS anymore because it's all, it's all read only and it only updates per whatever Fedora core OS needs to update the, the underlying packages. Because as most system administrators do or hell, system users in general nowadays, your, your environment gets cluttered, right? Like you start installing random things and you, before you know it, you've got files all over the place. And it's just one of those times. Um, the question is when doing the Docker Crows install, the initial go-to in the GUI hangs at updating. Had to kill the AWX containers and restart to get them to complete. Thoughts on why out-of-the-box install would um, never finishes? That's a that's a great question. Um, so, if with Docker Compose, there isn't liveliness checks, right? Um, there's there's just kind of like Docker sits there and and just spins up the things that you can. Do, Maybe we'll see if we can find that Docker Compose file real quick. As you can see over here, um, our little Vagrant box is, is kicked up and started doing, going, going, which is great. Um, so let's look at our Docker Compose file here real fast. I swear I just saw it. Uh, Docker Compose.yaml. That's, 
It's totally not what I need. Docker compose. Delivered. Let's see here. Where is the actual Docker compose file? Installer inventory. So maybe it's under installer. No, that would be too easy. I swear it has to be in the top, isn't it? Compose. Create the Docker Compose directory, local Docker. Ah, so it looks like they have a handful of abstractions on top of this. So you say the initial go-to of the GUI hangs at updating. So that could mean under C++, start the containers. Register, compose, start. Oh, interesting. Um, so, uh, W. V. Kane. Um, I'm not by any standards. I've like I've never used the Docker Compose here, but my just flipping through there, something that gets stuck. Um, if you're Docker, if you're execing into a container to run um, CA updates here, as you can see here, um, to get the updated the uh, updated CAs and all that jazz. Sometimes executing into a container when it's looking to run something and it has to get back out and come back in, it can get in a weird state. I have seen this before. Um, usually, uh, if you need to do something like this, I mean, I guess there's not really a way to do it because you would you do a Docker exec in. You need to run. You need to run this update CA trust inside of it. Hmm. Yeah, I guess. Huh. Yeah, but that 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 it could be one of the reasons why it got stuck. Um, and then when you kicked it, as you said. Um, it came back up and because it didn't need it, uh, because you didn't, oh, and it failed. Uh, let's see what happened here. It failed a lot. Jesus. All right. Uh, it's Postgres. Okay. Well, this obviously did not work. Um, vagrant status. So let's see here. Vagrant destroy that chef. So let's actually play with the Docker Compose. Why not? I mean, we got, this is kind of what we're doing here, right? Vagrant or alt dash F. So let's see here. All right, good. There we go. Now it's down. Uh, okay, so let's go back. Oops, I lost my chat. I lost my chat. Uh, here we go. AWX. So I don't want to actually install. I mean, I guess I do want to install it, but I want to install it in a way that isn't. It's ephemeral. Right, and I assumed a VM would be the way to do it. I guess Docker Compose. Um, that's cool. Don't want to install on a remote host. I don't want to install on this box. I mean, I guess I could just spin up a Rager box. Back, back to my original saying about using libvert and all that. Like I have the hardware behind me. I just, and I mean, I guess I could use the IBM cloud for this too, but um, the, the feedback loop sometimes is a little bit slower than I prefer. And I kind of, it's one reason why I like Vagrant, right? It's because I can just do Vagrant up and it gives me the thing that I need and I can keep moving forward. 
I don't have to sit there and really, really think. Um, all right, so you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna do this. Now let's go back to TD We're gonna get rid of these because I didn't like that. Um, I'm gonna do vagrant in it here. Build up a vagrant file. And we don't need this. We need this. What we can do is Fedora 32 cloud base. Let me double check that real quick. We're gonna do we're gonna do it this way. I like this way. The, um, vagrant Fedora 32. The door. Oh, almost, almost got it. Almost got it. All right. Uh, 32. Hot base. There we go. And you know what? Screw this. Uh, no. Copy. Uh, SRC. Uh, GitHub. Um, JJ Asgard. Two. There we go. Here. And Vega file, um, four to 80, 22, four gigs, we want to upgrade, and then we want Ansible. What else do we need in this thing? Um, Docker, uh, Fedora, Fedora, uh, Docker. Um, Pose install. What's the package I need? <sighs> Linux. Okay, not what I was hoping for. Come back to that in a second. Install a Docker image on here. Okay, so it looks like we need to actually do a little bit more. So we'll do DNF. Install this guy. And DNF. This guy. There we go. Uh, let's see, DNF. Don't care about nightly stuff. And then we're going to do this guy. Copy. So this should, now that's interesting. They by default tell you dash Y on these. Yet they don't do dash y. Well, I'm a good open source person, so let's take a quick. That's what I'm looking for, the version here, and find out how to update this uh, this uh, this page. Here we go. Okay, let's fork the repository. And DNF remove. So it looks like by, by actual standards, they don't use a dash Y in most places. If you notice, it says it doesn't default to that. Config manager, no. Config manager, configure, that's fine. List. So again, we should take away the dash Y because it's not consistent. Start Docker. We'll put the, we're going to put this all inside our vacant fire in a second, but being a good open source citizen, I see some problems in the docs. You should absolutely stop. And if you can, make the edits because, first of all, you will forget. You will forget unless you write it down somewhere. And I never do write anything down just because I'm forgetful to write things down. That was supposed to be a joke. Hopefully, somebody laughed. Um, but this way, uh, I can just fork it, make the changes, and then move on. 
Uh, uh, the question is, what does the dash Y uh, flag do? That is a great question. Um, so uh, you can, uh, when you do a DNF install of anything, um, it asks you, uh, are you sure? Do you want to install this? So the dash Y is an automatic exception. As you can see here, I do the dash Y of upgrade, dash Y of Ansible. And then um, uh, as you can see, I'm inconsistent here. Um, this should actually be dash. Actually, what I could do is the uh, yank put. There we go. Ah. There we go. So um, it will automatically just say yes to install this thing. So as you can see, I'm installing Ansible and then do this. And then obviously, because I know what this does by reading this documentation, um, I want to install CE, CIE, CLI, and Kane Um The uh, Now, there's an, while this is going to go in just a second, and then we'll do some sanity checks, but there's going to be conversation of like, JJ, why aren't you using Podman for this? Because Podman is um, the, the Red Hat version of it. Uh, and I will I will go on that tirade in just a moment, but first thing first, be a good open source citizen, have consistency in your commands because some of them assume that you're just going to run like it's curl bashing all over again. So anyway, sorry, tirade over. Uh, okay, that that that. Okay, so that all looks right now. Um, you see, if they had had like a DNF dash y remove here, then in my mind, it would want dash y everywhere. But to have it inconsistently, especially at the very beginning where you don't, you start the doc, tells you to remove all this stuff and expects you to say yes, then you would assume that every other command, you should expect to yes. So here we go. So um, uh, made or added the, or removed, remove the dash y from the different ran or different comment uh, example commands it seemed inconsistent so this way you have to say yes to each removal and installation. There we go. And propose change. There we go. And as you can see, we move it here, here, and here. Um, and that looks good. Didn't want to push anything else in there. Spacing looks right also or I should say looks correct also. So that's also good. Uh, so I will do, that should be verified. Oh, ha ha ha. So let's uh, delete this, come back over here, show my email and my schedule. Ah, sorry, didn't mean to do that. Um, put this here. Here we go. Now, now you can see it's verified because I'm going through what I normally do. Like I, I usually use Chrome for private searching things or stuff like that. Um, not private searching things, like uh, personal things. And I use Firefox for work. So I have all my, my keys and all set up through here. So uh, that's why that was kind of weird. Sorry about that. Uh, that's fine. Okay, so let's bring this down. So this is a proposed change. That's proposed change. What? No, go away. Um, I do not need any of this stuff. That's fine. So then I can go over here and create pull requests. So, Now, if there's a DCO on this, I did not put DCO on here because um, I did a minor change. 
hopefully that will, yeah, it looks like the DCO is not required. Okay, good. All right. So back to where we were. Uh, so we now have installed, or, oh, that's, oh, we should actually put Compose on here too, so we don't have to think about that. We'll come back to that in just a second. Uh, okay, D. Did I lose that? Oh, <laughs> oopsie. Um, Docker install Fedora. It's because I forked it and lost the repo or lost the tab. Okay, so we add our configuration, we add the repo, we install all that. That should be looking good. I don't really care about that specific thing. So let's go back here and then do, we need to do Linux. So we were going to need to do curl this to Docker Compose, right? Um, we are not doing this in Alpine. And we need to chmod it to this. Okay. And then don't really care about that. That looks all reasonable. And then what we want to do is we want to start Docker. And the first command we'll do is sudo running hello world. Oh, but unfortunately this will be run as root. So um, he'll be, he'll, 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 it'll have access to it, but we will need to create the vagrant user. Uh, we can just add that right now. Um, where is it? Here we go. Sudo. So let's, before we do this, we'll do user mod ag docker vagrant. Because we do everything, we, that's who we log in is, is the vagrant user. So in theory, running this, I mean, obviously it's just a big shell script and there's much better things like using Ansible or Chef or whatever to do this. But I just want a disposable machine that, has, uh, that is based off of Fedora 32 has um, Docker installed and I can just do vagrant up and it just comes up together for me. That is my whole goal. So hopefully this will this will come out how I want. And uh, needless to say, I'll also publish this uh, on, on GitHub because uh, this seems like a relatively, not super useful, but not at the same time, like could be useful one day kind of thing. Um, so that's what I'll do. Um, also make directory uh, data here. And then touch data .kit keep. If you didn't notice inside of the Vagrant file, um, I have this sync folder. Uh, it's just a force to have it. I've always had where I know that in slash Vagrant data is the data directory. If I need to have anything from the local machine, like making edits or whatever, and going back there. Okay. And 448 does not seem like the right number. Um, four gigabytes of RAM in megabytes is 496. So that was, don't know where I got that one from, 96. All right. So you ready to see it? We're all gonna see it? Vagrant up, here we go. Let's see if our little ephemeral machine does what we want it to. Do 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 As you see, I exposed a couple ports, port 80, 22, and uh, 22 in actually two different places. That's just me uh, being overly paranoid. I guess I wanted to like just talk to it um, through another machine, so I don't mess with the one that I don't mess with the default uh, 2222, which I realize doesn't do anything, but me. Eh. Just kind of nice to have consistency, you know. So, all right, we're getting somewhere. We're doing our updates. Let's make this bigger so we can actually see the text. There we go. Do 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 do. 
security. Let's see here. Oops, somebody just pinged me. <laughs> All right. Uh, if you came in from the AWX um, uh, free note channel for my little announcement there, uh, thank you for joining. Um, uh, it's great. We appreciate it. Uh, we are about to get right back onto AWX here in a moment, um, being that I needed a base box to build it from, and I wasn't going to muddle my box with this. Um, but that's the whole reason why we're putting Docker Compose on here. Um, so Docker and Docker Compose is already installed. Port 80 is already open. So in theory, I should be able to just pull down the AWX um, repo, and then uh, with the, that repo run Docker Compose, and it should install everything I need right there on that machine, uh, on this machine, so I'm not messing with it. In turn, I'll probably have to build, spin up another machine on a different port or whatever, so I can actually start talking to it. But still, point being is we're making great progress here, which is really cool. Um, but as someone so tongue in cheekly put it inside the uh, Freenote channel, uh, hopefully I practice this ahead of time. And no, I did not. Um, that's part of streaming, is the ability to kind of come here and play with, try to figure this stuff out. So um, again, uh, as I always say, if you have any questions or thoughts, or, or hell, you just want to bullshit with me for a couple minutes, you're more than welcome to put this in the chat. Um, I, I am taking, keeping an eye on that too. Keep going. It's doing stuff. Slowly but surely. Doing stuff. Okay. Just thinking about it. Thinking about it. Maybe soon. This is the upgrade, but it's always good to be upgraded. So I don't have to have this do it some other time. In a moment, I will um, take that another base box. Actually, you know what I'll do? I'll probably, no. Well, if I was really smart, I would have spun it up so it's two machines. Um, I've actually haven't done that in a while. Should look that up here in a second while this is going. But uh, change out my insulin pump real fast. I was tempted to. Okay, almost there. Finishing the upgrade. That's good. All right. This is looking good. It's installing Ansible now in the newest version. Perfect. All our dependencies, which is basically all of Python. That's supposed to be a joke. All right, okay. That is a bunch of red text there. We should find out what that was. Okay, that did not work. Okay, hang on. Give me two seconds here. So, like with all good software, it did not work the first time. Again, it's supposed to be a joke. Let's see here. All right, what did you not like? You broke error downloading metadata. Did not find this. Oh, it looks like that's true. Did we change something? Did 
There is no 32. What kind of bullshit is this? Did I just do that? Wait, I am doing that. So we add that repo. We add this. Yeah, yeah. So maybe you could do, uh, you get, God damn it. Come on. So maybe I just do W get on that. And then Docker C E dot repo. Try that. Um, while this is going on, oh no, I'll do that later. So vagrant pop provision. Try this again. It's already there. It should all be um, item potent too. What? Supposed to be easy. Sorry. W got that. Wait, no. Docker and vagrant file. Yeah, let's take away this for now. So I'll just spend wait. Docker or vagrant call to chef. Bring it back up in a queen state. And while that's going on, I will come, oh, oh, if you didn't see, right here. Um, all our checks changed. And oh, we even have a one to see that it's consistent. Let's take a look real quick. Um, the door. Installing the document of Fedora. We should not see any, oh. Do we really miss one? Wait. Oh, ha. <laughs> oh, this is the actual um copy paste. There we go. Now we have removed our dash twice. Yay. Awesome. Okay. Open source doing the things it's supposed to do. Good stuff. All right. So let's go. Yeah. Oh, well, that's a problem. Did you see that? Um, now this is shocking. Like I really don't know why this is true. 
if you noticed. All right. Where was it? There it is. WK not found. <laughs> We're not going to get very far with that, are we? Uh, vagrant alt dash F. Vagrant file. What do you get? There you go. You know what? While this is going on, let's um, let's uh, comment those two lines out for now. Same as with this one, I guess. So then we're just messing with the Docker stuff. Vagrant of dash dash provision, provision, there we go. And then while this is going on, vagrant file to machines. Let's see what we need to do here. Oh, well, that's easy. Okay, so, um, What am I doing wrong here? You weren't supposed to do wget until. Ansible. Pull this down. No mesh, no mesh. I get that. Okay, so talk er Fedora thirty two repo. Maybe. Oh, this gentleman has literally identified exactly our problem. You know, so we can't use Podman here because we want to use Docker Compose. Oh my good God. Oh, you're kidding me. Okay, so we need to come over here and do vim vagrant file.
wasn't the end of his post on Docker. Um, so it looks like, yeah, this was all, it looks like it start, he started doing that, but he told you to go check out the, um, check out the Fedora Magazine version, which seems to be a little bit more streamlined, question mark. Um, I'm curious to see if we can get this to work this way. So let's uh, delete all this. Come here to Grubby. Oh, this is not gonna be fun. Okay. And open up firewall. And this one here, and this one here. Then we need to system enable this and then system cuddle reboot. So we provision the machine, we open everything up, we re restart it so Grubby's happy. And then, oh, we actually need to come on, really? Group add Docker. Add Docker to that group. Hopefully we can come back to the full run here in a minute. Um, if you didn't also notice, no, no, one thing at a time, JJ, one thing at a time. Um, so I'll do that, vagrant status. Status. Okay. Delete it. Just thinking about it. Vagrant. Oh. Let's see how this goes. Thinking about it. Let me see more caffeine here in a bit. Now, in theory, if we actually get this to to get Docker Compose installed on there. We could actually release this when Docker Compose is installed and AWX is installed on there or cloned down and then ran. And in theory, we could release this as a Vagrant file saying, hey, you want to play with AWX using Vagrant? Here's a way to do it. That would actually be kind of cool. Um, that would be something good to get back to the community. But we need to get to the point where we have Docker here working first, which is Again, this is such a like a niche thing. I, I realize that, but I, I live and breathe in the niches, I guess. At least good friends of mine tell me I do. Still waiting for this machine to come up. Uh, so we've got a couple more people joining us. Um, if you have any questions or thoughts, please don't hesitate to throw them in the chat. Um, I'm here trying to get AWX up and running um, on a VM so I can start playing with it. Um, if you haven't seen it, um, AWX is not this one. AWX right here. Um, it is the upstream version of um, Ansible Tower. So it's the Fedora version of, of, of Tower, if you will, if Fedora to Rel. Um, there was a Docker Compose installation 
uh, we haven't actually gotten there yet because my goal was to have a Vagrant box uh, that I could just do Vagrant up and then have AWX running if I wanted to play with it and then like destroy it and not have to worry about it. And it seems that um, the uh, most up-to-date version, which is three years old, um, doesn't work. Uh, so we've gone down the path of trying to spin up our own Vagrant box, but again, using Fedora, Fedora 32, but we've ran into some problems for installing Docker on there and hopefully we've got the fixes here. Um, I don't know why it's stuck. This is a problem. Virtual um, box. Um, it's thinking about it. Was it a kernel panic? Ah, oh, crap, it might be. Can I see my console, please? No, that looks like it's running. Why are you stopped? Let's try this again, shall we? Remove, delete all files. RM vagrant machines default. It's so true. This, these are the sort, this is actually how the sausage is made. It is very, 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 very frustrating. Uh, vagrant. Let's try that again. Oh, that's fun. Okay, so we've imported it, or we're importing it. That was quite fast. There we go. Okay. Interesting that it ran the vagrant shell commands, or the, those firewall commands <coughs> so early. Doesn't seem like a very good. Hmm. Not too sure what to think here. Oh, sorry. Oops. Okay. Get back up close to the mic here. Um, yeah, let that still do its thing. Wow, okay. This. Why isn't it destroy? Am I spelling destroy wrong? Destroy. Yes. Whatever. Okay. Um, so.
this would really suck. Um, and why? Oops. Ink. But. 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 Okay. Is this possible? This because this is all in one. This is supposed to be in one line because that's what that inline does. It's not actually running a script. The reason why we saw the FTL or firewall command problem. If that's true, I could have actually answered some of our problems from earlier. Shows how it's been a long time since I've used Vagrant. Mm. There we go. Okay. Vagrant up. Let's try this again. And eventually we'll get to our second box that we can get into. So yeah, back to the uh, Proxmox thing. Um, there's a really good following of proc blocks out there, and especially in the um, self-hosted ecosystem. Um, So I have a feeling I really should look into playing with it. Um, there is, I swear there's a way you can actually ask it to call out to random clouds. Um, prox, mox, cloud. Mm. Digital Ocean. This actually just had to run on Digital Ocean. I swear there's a way that you can call out to different um, cloud providers. And it would actually take ownership of them. I'll look into that again later. Okay. Okay. So. This is H. There is no firewall command. Firewall CMD vagrant. What? Sudo firewall CMD. There is no firewall CMD installed in this thing. Um, Okay, so it looks like I gotta install it first. Vagrant, destroy, why? Nope. Watch out. Don't know why that wasn't working earlier. Must have been not spawned it wrong. Oh well. Um, DNF install firewall D. If that's true, then these aren't actually needed. I love how I say one thing, I'm going to do one thing on stream, and I keep doing it something completely different. That's yeah, fine. That's what streaming is about. Mm 
All right. Here again, status, status, status. Wow, I can't type anymore. Okay, vagrant. Oh, let's try this again. I really know so little about Webvert. It's always been abstracted away from me. Maybe I really should spend my time on this. Let me always start. I don't spell VMware wrong. Back to you in a second. Why did you? I forget to do dash dash Y on. So as you saw, it's, it, it said that it could not, um, fi these firewall commands didn't take because of no need, um, firewall D um, wasn't running. So what I'll do here is I'll install it and start it. Um, speaking of firewall CMD SSH. I probably should immediately put that in there. Mm. I swear there was a way just to do like default. Oh, well, that's fine. We'll come back to that later. All right, try this again. Grand up. And back to GitLab over here. Edit. in where? What? No, not, oh, God damn it. Put two PRs in for this stream already. Well, I guess an MR and a PR, if you're being pedantic. But putting two PRs in for a stream is pretty good. It's pretty good.
Wow. This is uh, taking a lot longer to fork than I thought it would. Thinking about it. Wow. I do love how the docks are completely off. Maybe it's worth updating the Fedora docks. Just basically, well, no, because where we put the, the note at the beginning of enabling the C groups thing. Docker. Okay. So Docker run hello world. Hey, hey, there we go. Excellent. All right. So we now have a disposable um, Fedora 32 core Vagrant box that has Docker installed up, up and going. That's pretty damn cool. OK, so let's clean this up a little bit. Just be on the safe side. Um, this was good, that was good. We didn't need that anymore. That reboots the machine. So, um, just because I'm paranoid, before I move any farther, I want to enable the upgrade, get Docker Compose installed, and then with that, we can start looking to build our second machine it would be the one we, we interface with. So we, or actually no, next thing to do is get the, the we need Git installed so we can clone. Yeah. Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there. Um, clone um, Docker Compose. Uh, no. And it looks like it's on port 80, so that's good. So in theory, okay, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just jumping the gun here. I'm jumping the gun, I'm getting too excited. Okay, now, Docker or Vagrant destroy dash F. Okay. So, um, I am going to run this one more time. Vagrant up. And then I'm going to um, take a quick bio break. I'll leave this running, um, but I'll be on mute. Uh, and then we'll we'll pick it up from there. Because in theory, if this reboots and we can SSH into it and have Docker Compose on there, then we can actually start working on getting AWX up and running. And then the way it's installed, um, pointing to the 
um, because it just doesn't port 80. We'll be able to go localhost port 8080 and we should see AWX as soon as we get the docking compose up and running. And then now with that, then we can spin up the extra box. And then in theory, if we do like 8023 as the port for the extra box for like, I don't know, extra box, I don't know what we'll name it. Um, then we could in theory take AWX talking to that. So we might actually get this done in a reasonable amount of time. So again, I'm gonna run for a minute, um, go to take a bio break, get some more caffeine, but keep an eye on this and I will be back in just a moment. Wow, almost perfect timing. That was great. Uh, getting there. 
getting there. All right. Now, what we're going to have to do Now, it looks like we have to edit some stuff. Same defaults, same defaults. It's fine. Okay, looks like it's relatively sane. Damn it. Okay. Um, so that's a problem. Um, did not actually get there. So user bin local doesn't exist. What? Are you gonna switch? All right, that's fine. We're gonna work with it. User local bin. Okay, hang on. That seems weird. Um, oh, here we go. Wow, this took a really long time to, to fork. Okay, here's mine. There we go. And back to VMware ESX. I, because nobody in their right mind is US, yeah, using ESX right now. All right, hang on. Oh, good old diabetes in the way. Um, it's a weird inconsistency on that too. Should probably fix that form also. All right. Drop that to a line of its own. Okay. So we can come back over here. Um, fixed. VMware formatting and fixed and consistent spacing. There we go. No, uh, I noticed that the VMware was built in or uh, formatted in for incorrectly. This fixes it. Also noticed. A spacing issue. I should put that one right. It's not being too cheeky. Um, also, spacing in the code and fix that. All right. 
there's our second uh, PR. Pretty cool, huh? Um, right. What? Did I not do this to the... What? How the hell did I get that wrong? Oh, come on. It is. No, I want to do it upstream. What? Why would I do a PR into my own repo? Could I click a new? Merge request. New merge request. This one. Yes. Yes. Fix me. VMware form and capitalization. Fix me in one assistant. Formatting. Okay. All right, here we go. Wow. That was, um, Surprisingly challenging for what I was trying to do. Okay, so why are you failing? Oh, come on, really? I think you just told me to go fuck myself. Okay, edit. Can I edit the commit message? I don't think I can. Commits, this commit. Edit file. Edit file. Sixteen. VMware format adding and sixteen. Space find off by AJ Asgar or also editing commit changes. Okay. So I should be able to go back to merge requests here. This one. Okay, well, being able to actually edit the commit message um, via the GUI, that's that's quite nice. Um, I gotta give gotta give GitLab some points there. It's just frustrating, I couldn't see that immediately. 
Okay, where were we? Um, so docker run hello dash world. No. Um, Docker compose. Docker compose is installed. Which Docker compose? Okay, so if that's true, we don't actually need any of this. That's good. Okay, so big vagrant SSH, and then come over to here. We will want to clone this down. Copy. DDR or get clone. This okay, so we've cloned that now. So now we can go into install CD AWX installer. Okay. Let's take a quick look at this inventory file. Yes, we still want to do localhost. Good. Okay. And all that seems sanity. So Ansible quick. Okay. Ansible Dina sudo Dina install Ansible. Okay, and then okay, DIR home um, or no get home um, copy that and then change home. Um, Dash R vagrant 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 um, vagrant AWX um, vagrant AWX. Okay, it's better. So we should be able to do Ansible playbook, playbook dash i inventory install that YAML. All right, let's see this work. A lot of things are skipping. It's okay. Thinking about it, thinking about it. It's running, it's doing what I want it to. It's thinking about it, making stuff happen. 
starting containers. That's fine. I'm feeling good. Feeling really good about this. If anyone has any questions or thoughts, maybe I missed something. Do you think it'd be worth adding that note at the beginning of the Docker, Fedora, uh, Docker Fedora installation doc? It's done. Um, okay. So docker log stash f a w x task. Um, is this errors? No, these aren't errors. These are just doing the stuff that needs to get done. I guess it's uh, eventual consistency. I don't see that, I don't like that permission denied error I keep seeing. Don't know if that's bad. Mm. Let's see. So local host 8080. No, it's still doing stuff. Docker compose status. No. What is it? Yes. Like it looks like it's running, but it looks like it's also broken. Um I really can't tell if this is good or bad. <laughs> That's cute. Uh, lab coat nomad. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, 
Well, for every, for every good software engineer, it's it looks like it's working, but now it's it's broken. Um, it's complaining about some credentials file. I have an extra control seated at the right time. Hopefully, you've been able to see it yourself too. But I really have like I can't tell if this is good or bad. I really can't. Permission denied, credentials PY. So docker sec dash it bin bash cd etsy Yeah, lots of non expected. Yeah, right there, callback receiver, which also could mean that it's just not up and running, right? It could just be hitting the API over and over and over again. And because it's not giving the thing back that it wants, it can, it, it's just angry. And it, being that we're also doing this on a four gig VM. Um, yeah, like it's still doing stuff. And it could be that this just doesn't have a lot of, um, like I've really, I've, I've, I've constricted this machine significantly, right? Um, PSWX or free dash M. Well, I mean, I gave it four gigs and it's only using 400 megs. So it could be that we're just, we're just being impatient. But I'm curious to see LS dash LI. Etsy tower copy credentials. Oh no, actually, yeah, um, Rabco, this is not on. Uh, this is not on IBM Cloud. Um, we've actually, I, I took a, a left turn um, here, and uh, I. I wanted to create an ephemeral way to just play with this and then kind of give it back to the world, right? And I started looking for um, Vagrant boxes that did this. Um, and we've ended up creating a Vagrant file here um, where we actually use Fedora 32, um, install uh, Docker on it, um, and then we pull down uh, AWX on there into the local correct location and then reboot the machine. And the theory was is that you should be able to just do the install commands from AWX, uh, the installation, and then all of a sudden AWX should just appear, right? Because it'll pull all the stuff down and be all done with Docker Compose. So we have everything basically contained inside that machine. Um, I was hoping to pu push this back as soon as it's done to the community too, because I think this is kind of cool. You don't have to worry about Kubernetes or, or um, or OpenShift or anything like that. You can just do Vagrant up and then run this command. Hell, we could probably even do a post provisioning um, after the reboot, but that's stretch goal right now. Uh, and then you have AWX to play with. And the next goal was to add a sub, another machine on the Vagrant file to be um, a separate box so you can actually have something to play with instead of just doing it. But yeah, exactly. Um, it, it seems really straightforward, but believe it or not, we've actually ran into some really interesting issues uh, running from just the straight normal Vagrant box to uh, that came, came from uh, Gerald, I think his name is, um, to getting Docker Compose to work, or Docker to work for that matter, in Vagrant. Um, but we are getting close, I can taste it. It's just we're not, not quite there yet. So. Um, So this is obviously something that we are not looking for. Wow, that's, um, that's a problem. That's a real problem. Um, Okay, so I have never seen
permissions like that before. Yeah, I have never seen permissions like that before. And then in Conf D, we've got file. Can we even see the file? Of course not. Um, this be PNF install file. <coughs> Show me some love. Okay, good. Thanks. Thanks for stopping by. Um, yeah, it is true. We'll keep the, uh, the secret safe with that. We'll see how far we get here. God only knows. Uh, okay. Oh, that's interesting. These containers have EPL um, enabled, which I thought was interesting. Hmm. So file permissions. Boy, thanks, file. Jesus. Okay. Um, okay. So, this is so weird. Change my or cat or cat let's see group. Okay. Yes, UX. Looks like everything's running as root. Oh hey Mary, how you doing? Um uh, just knocking our head against a, a VM that for some reason when we spin up the container, ownership is not created, which is kind of weird. Um, very, very weird. <laughs> um, change or change own root dot root credentials. I can't even act, I can't even change ownership of it, but I'm root. Who am I? So I can't even change it as root. What? Okay. So in my vagrant file, yes. Uh, the only thing I do is I change the ownership of the AWS Shark Array that I cloned out. Oh, but it's not actually, no, no, it's a container inside. So we're, we're, too, we're too deep here, right? So we got the um, Vagrant machine, right? Check this out. Docker PS. And we have these guys. So Redis is jacked up, but this port, that was too easy. So it doesn't like, it 
Ansible AWX. Okay, I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole quite yet. I wanna see, is this done? No, still doing the thing. Okay, so that's broken. That's this one. So the dependent, the dependent container is still in the broken state, even though we have our web front end up and running, pointing to the broken back end. And the broken back end, okay. Actually, you know what? Let's take a quick detour. AWX Redis. Oh, that's a problem. Um, can I fix this one? Okay, so not that. Okay, so let's look at the build. Um, Docker, uh, where is this? Oh, Moan Milk is probably in Quay or some, something like that. Um, Ansible, Metamix. Okay, so yes, everything is rolled into this, well, where we've been looking. Okay. Um, the file that is all broken for us is conf d credentials. So, because it's just not a simple Docker compose build because I do everything through the playbook. I can't just rebuild this container. It just pulls it down and shoves it in there. So not what I want. And everything is built. Okay, so the Docker needs root, yes. And the question mark implies while you have read access, you don't have permissions for stat. Am I getting that right? Not, a, I don't think so. Um, so if I go into the actual Docker container, right, I execute into it, uh, AWS task. I look at it and I look at just the thing in general. It has root, there are users in here, um, and if I cat out Etsy group, there's random normal expected users. Um, I would imagine the Etsy, so I go to Etsy tower, which seems to be the installation place for all this stuff. It looks uh, yeah, like, here we go, settings, perfect example. So settings, which has obviously been edited to make this happen, is owned by root also. So I'm assuming everyone needs root. Like everything is just put in as root. So,
So if I come in here and just do change mod or change own root. Okay, cool, cool. But don't get me wrong, that, that's, that's really good feedback. Um, they think, yes, walking through this was, was, was exactly what I need to do here because I, I really am grasping at straws. Uh, there we go. Again, back, back to what you pointed out, uh, Labco, the stat issue, right? We still can't even just hard code it as like, hey, just give everyone roots. Um, because from it, like we, we don't even know what it is, which is really weird. Really, really weird. Um, I wish I could find the Docker file for this thing. That would be the next logical step. Come on, JJ, spell right. Docker file. Actually, that might be what I'm looking for. Docker, Docker file. Make. Okay, where the hell did that thing come from? All right, let's try just building the dev version of this thing, I guess. Um, Docker PS, Docker RM. You know what? Vagrant destroy dash F. And try this from the ground up again. And what I'll do, hey, thanks for the follow. I can, ma'am, mebs, I can't pronounce it. I'm sorry. <coughs> um, ooh, but the dev container is on a different port. So, boom, vagrant. So let's get port of port of port. Um, 80, 43, 80, 43, to 43. Okay. So um, my log make isn't going to be there. So let's go ahead and install it. So vagrant up. Oh. So let's try the this way, um, where we're going to go into the directory, do make docker compose build, then we'll copy the stuff over, make, like we're doing this the dev version way, not the production version way. But if we're seeing all those weird, um, question marks, couldn't think of the name. Uh, if we couldn't find the, if we've seen those weird question marks, maybe we can get the actual app to up start up as an dev. Granted, that could be a fine caveat with this thing because this is just to play around with it. Maybe playing around with a dev container is a more reasonable thing to do. Also, it could take a very long time to build, but that's a different conversation and we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I'm feeling good though. I feel like I learn, I'm learning a ton which is always nice. That's, that's great to feel with streams. I'm getting there, thinking about things, making stuff happen. 
moving this to another window. All right, I'm getting there. Got a feeling building this thing's going to take a while too, because we're going to have to go in there and do the Docker builds for each of the containers, <coughs> which will be a little bit annoying. Let's, while we're waiting here. AWX. All the way up. Uh, let's look at that make file. Oh, good job. What it was called? Docker Compose Build. Okay, so oh okay, so we run Ansible from the Jenga two Docker file template. Then we do Docker build. And then we tag it, which is fine. I feel like they should have this third one called Docker Compose Build Push. Yeah. All right, so CD export. Make sure you know what. Put over here. Export. Oh, wait, hold on. Z no. No, I didn't, did I? Um, copy. CD repo. CD SRC. GitHub. Come. Maybe our Ansible, Ansible, um, thinking, get clone, this guy. To the VX. Yeah, hub fork. Get check out dash p jj ascar. Push container in make up make file docker compose. Well, that's interesting. Could not resolve host name of GitHub. Okay. No, Joe. Joe. Okay, so. Here we go. So this one. Yank. But. Push.
All right. And let's put in our third PR for the night or the day, which you got to admit is pretty damn cool if you think about it. This way we can push. Push. Here we go. Get status. Get diff. Make sure it's just the two things I expect it to be. Delete, create, delete, create. Get commit. Get and get commit. And having the push commented out seemed in smell. Um, created a new a target with push for Docker. Created two new make targets push for Docker from close. So removing the commented line and lines out. Hit push JJ Asgard to push, push container. Go over in here, bring this over. Yep. Oops. Mm. Okay. Sorry, I lost the chat there for a minute. If anyone has anything else to say or I'm all ears, but I'm feeling really good about where we've gotten today. Okay. Just to one time verify, push, push. Let's push, remove, push, remove, push. Okay, pull request. Okay, and it looks like we actually got follow up uh, this one. Uh, the, it seems that the hash Y was used in some, but not all of the commands. If you to your point, people pop, copy and paste these commands without, without thinking about them. If you are forcing the Forcing that um, for if you want to just do a hash y everywhere, in essence, 
instance, you are doing a curl bash into their systems. Having removed the dash y, you force the person to say yes to the installation of any of the dependencies and anything else that might come in. This is just a simple sanity, sanity check. And if you have the dash Y, you might as well create a TL your section with all the commands as one bash script so people don't even need to read the part me part call. Hopefully this makes sense. Um, I'm, I've, thanks for reaching out. Hopefully that didn't sound too terse or anything like that. Um, dependencies, sanity check, let's make six. Here we go. Comment on that. All right. So, where were we? Okay. So that broke. Vagrant SSH. Actually, no. oh shit. Okay, so. It wasn't able to find, okay. So then vagrant file, that's a little frustrating. So we'll come back to that another day. Um, and our D, get clone, copy. That then CD AWX and then back to the vagrant SSH. Okay, so um, get clone this. Okay. Thinking about it. So AWX now, Docker run hello world, just to make sure it's there. Good. I've, I've Sandy checked this enough now. I don't think I need to run Docker world anymore or any of that, but just to be on the safe side. And then Docker Compose is there too. Good, yes. Okay, so with that, uh, make Docker Compose build, right? Okay, let's see how this goes. One in CentOS 8. 
It's a little too crazy yet. 51 steps, Jesus. I guess we're putting the whole world into this thing. Okay. Should probably force those changes. Okay, so All right. This file was built from Oh, it is doing builders. Good. That's a good sign. Okay, so it failed there. Do I want to add? I think I do. So that should force copy Hit add status commit or force the Uh, for fix the failed to set or kill during this fixes the error. Failed to set my cow defaulting
even though he, he will, he will, is in a talker, talker, power chain. This it looks. Looks like it isn't honored by the Tina installation. This is a cosmetic, but it's so we will build these containers. I don't see bread, 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 scary text. Push to transcribe to transfer available. That's our fourth PR today. Not too bad. Not too bad. And this one. We go back to edits, copy, cancel. All right, not too shabby, people. Not too shabby. All right, there it is again. I'm, uh, I'm going to give this another 10 minutes or so. Um, and then I'm going to stop the stream unless I got people asking some questions. Uh, I've been streaming for over, over two hours now. And uh, it's, it's time for me to start waiting or start winding down my Friday. I'm feeling good about this though. I am. Never go on to my this guy. We'll do it at some point at some point. Oops. Ah.
There we go. And the fifth PR today. Um, we vote on how to get um, Adora 32 working via the Fedora Mega Magazine. And off line. Oh, okay. Um, Finish this. Don't need all that. No. No. I want to do this to the upstream fork. Copy this one. That one. There we go. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. Perfect. Okay. So that's done. So did our due diligence on those. Now we need to copy this. Okay. In AWX settings, local settings, py. Can't let me win, can you? Anything insane? No, it's all standard stuff. Okay, do the GUI now. NPM not found. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Bob Nicole. Uh, Thanks for hopefully we'll also get done. Who knows?
Hmm. Okay. Well, I'm gonna let this keep running. Um, we did get five PRs put in. I mean, that's gotta be that's gotta be worth something, right? We uh, we really did push back to the open source community with all the things we've learned, um, and hopefully this actually work uh, eventually. Um, it'd be funny as soon as I end this thing, it comes up and works, which needless to say will make me very frustrated. Um, but uh, hopefully I'll I'll get this pushed up to uh, GitHub. So if you ever decide to use it yourself, um, you'll be able to play around with it, which would I think would be kind of cool. Uh, then you'll have disposable of uh, disposable playground play with AWS, which is uh, always useful. So uh, thanks everyone uh, for checking around. Um, if you have any last questions or any thoughts, I'll stick around for a couple more seconds. Um, otherwise, I think it's time for me to say goodbye. <laughs>